my graduate topic would be mostly about minimalism in visual arts. Um, minimalism is one of the movements in visual art, where the work is set up to expose the essence and essentials of identity of, of a subject through eliminating all known essential forms, features, or concepts. And the movement developed uh, strongly uh, in 60s, 1960s, and early 1970s. Okay, so this is um, a piece of, this is um, a painting by Ellsworth Kelly. The title is Orange Lilies with Green. And this was painted in 1991, an asymmetrical sub, sub abstract painting that is made up with two, made up of two canvases. And if you were to describe this painting with a one word, what would it be? I have a lot of shape. I mean, not one word. One word. <laughs> one word. Um, Roll one. Cut. Oh, Forms. Level. Somebody already said shape. Say something else. Construction of the temple of Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Berg, Berganzian miniature. I don't even know. Okay, it was painted in 1460. It kind of shows the evidence of the event that happened back in the day. You know, it's obvious. I think a lot of people know this paint. I've seen this painting, and this is a uh, girl with a pearl earring by Johannes. Jo 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 Johannes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, it was painted in 1665. It's an oil painting. It's a portrait, and yeah. So it, the girl is centered. A lot of people have to know this painting. This is ti this title, Sunflowers by Vincent van Gogh. It was painted in 1888. So, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to Kelly's painting. Um, the difference between this painting and other all the other three paintings are it's it's like um the other three paintings got like person people buildings and what is it? oh the flowers in a Van Gogh painting um this has got like different kinds of information like color like it's obviously only two colors green and orange and the shapes are obvious, rectangle and half circle. And it's got dimensionality, so it's got like shape, uh, no, no, shadows, depending on how it's lighted. And so, like, yeah. And it creates this tricky atmosphere from this painting. And also, the other three paintings don't have any really emotional information, but you can get energetic mo emotion from this painting, the, par the orange part of the painting, and the calmness in green part. So, and in 
generally it doesn't these colors do really don't match like they clash in the slide so if you imagine the rolls of colors they're like conflicted okay so this is one of my pictures I've taken um, it's got only t almost two colors three colors and it's simple but I have some story behind it okay so this balloon is yourself and it's reflected on the window and it's almost it's bended you know like not straight and I feel like the straight balloon is showing yourself in front of people like you're confident you think you're confident and you think you're good and but inside of yourself you think you're not you think you're not good enough you need to improve more and like that you know like the, dif the emotions the, the difference of emotions in yourself and out how you look I think that's why I wanted to put in this piece Okay, so the, my argument would be why minimalism isn't boring. That's why I want to prove because um, these minimalism artwork have in inspired me and I really, that's what I value when, I'm making, when I make art. Um, I think the minimalism artworks got deeper information than it seemed if you take a little bit of time look, to look at it and I feel like it's like it's like a treasure hunt like you have to find a secret code from simple work and I think if you understand art a little bit it's fun to do that so yeah that's it <laughs> All right, questions, questions for Sarah. What would you say to me with your argument if I said with the picture with the, you know, like the green rectangle and the blue half circle, whatever, if mm -hmm. I if I said I didn't get orange, orange, or what did I say? Green and blue. Right, <laughs> green and orange don't really matter because I don't think it's, I don't think it's cool, right? I don't get any emotions from it. I just think it's kind of, it's two shapes. And I think people that think that's cool are crazy. What would you say arguing? against that to me. That's why I'm gonna uh, prove in my bed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, could you, um, all right, does anybody else have a question? I'm sorry. I have a question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. When you were taking this picture, right, um, did you look at the balloon and think all of this crazy stuff that just fell out, or did you first take the picture and yeah. then when you were looking through Obviously, it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's very cool. And one, one last thing. Um, out of all the styles of art, why did you choose minimalism? Like, what is something personally that you have attached to minimalism that you like it the most? I feel like it helps. It helps me like try to find what's what's like what's important or not. Like in my like lifestyle too. Like if I have like so much stuff around me, it's so hard to find what's really necessary for me and I think minimalism helps me find like what what's like truly good for me and I can just get up, get rid of other stuff I think. Well, I, I just wanted to ask you one question. Yes. And and um, can you go back to the um, Vermeer? Yeah. There she is. All right. So, um, what would you say is the emotional content of this painting? 
Well, not just for you, but everybody. <laughs> Does this painting make you feel anything? No. No. Really not? Yeah. It's, a, it's a portrait of a girl. Yeah, you know, with that, it's like, it is what it is. It's just no. some. It's, it's, it's a picture. Someone it's drew long. a picture. From the kids She's like longing. <laughs> she's looking back, like, her face doesn't look concerned. Like, she's relaxed. And, like, it feels like the person that's painting her is familiar to her. Like, almost like someone could interpret it like she's longing for something. Like, I don't really think that's what she's doing. I just think she's relaxed, and I think she's, like, content. I think, like, she's just kind of, like, looking back, and she's not really worried about anything. She just seems, like, content with her life. This is a look of contentment to you? Kind of. Like, she just looks like she's glancing back. Like, she's not really worrying about anything. Okay. All right. Anybody uh, else have a yeah, different reaction? Yeah, I, I feel like... Like she's looking for something, you know. It makes me feel like I should be looking for something too. Oh, yeah. She's like she's searching for for something or someone. Yeah. And I feel like she's looking back at her lover. Yeah, yeah that's We're, what I thought too. But why? Yeah. It's just like it's literally just like she could just be posing for a painting because that's kind of cool. You get a painting of yourself. I don't, it kind of uh, reminds me of those Instagram videos. Have you seen those? That like um, there's a person and then you like. It's in different scenarios, right? But they just compile it all together, and it's the girl like running, right. and then uh, it's holding like the guy's hand, and the guy's recording it, right? Mm -hmm. It makes me think of that. All right, Eric, what were you guys saying? Um, okay, here's the story. Kind of reminds me of that. Is uh, there's this really famous author in China, and he wrote a bunch of articles. Then there's a bunch of people studying him and doing analysis on him. Then when they actually talk to the actual author about his emotions when he was writing it when he was writing it, and all he said was, I wrote it because I felt like it, not because I wanted to put any emotions into it. That kind of reminds me of this, because I think a person drew, people draw stuff because they want to draw it, and paint it because, <laughs> because they wanted to do it, not that because, oh, I have such strong emotion I want to put into this. That would be meaningful. I agree. I don't want to waste your time. <laughs> I don't understand you guys. No, no, like it's cool. Like I'm good at drawing. I can, uh, I can paint. I'm good at painting. I can paint and make money. Are you sure? But <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I mean, all right. Why? What were you gonna say? I was gonna say, um, I just, I think she's really, really beautiful, and I think that that like hits me the most. And it's like a lot of paintings and portraits of people. Like, if you see them in a museum and stuff, they're like. They're like posing, they're like sitting straight, um, and they just like a lot of them look kind of boring. And like this one, there's not like too much to it, like it's realistic, but like it makes you feel like she's not like alive, but that she's like you know, that she's like real. I, I feel like she's chance. alive. Yeah, she, I, I just, I, I like, sure hope she is. The biggest thing is like what? she's just so beautiful. I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, to me, yeah, yeah. So, like, the thing that people say about Bermuda is um, that there's, like, this kind of photographic quality to his, his paintings. And, like, if you compare this to, like, the um, medieval painting that you did before, um, there's, like, a real sense here that we are seeing this woman at a specific moment in time, right? It's not idealized. It's not, it's not flat. It's, like... She's having a specific emotion. She's giving us a specific look at a specific point in time. And that's what makes it arresting, right? That's what your eyes, like, your, your eye goes straight to her eyes. And, and I don't know, I, I, I think her expression is, I mean, she's like a little surprised, maybe. Maybe she's a little ashamed or, or embarrassed. Um, I don't know. But clearly the painting has like a kind of emotional content, I think. I mean, I, I definitely respond to it emotionally, absolutely. But if we go to the Kelly, can you go to the Kelly? I don't need to take a lot of time with this. <laughs> All right, but, but you, you said, did, did you say, I'm not sure if I heard you right, that in your opinion, this painting has more emotional content than the Vermeer? 
Yeah, so how, how does that work? What, what, in your opinion, is the emotional content? I feel like you can, like, imagine as many as you want. Like, you can say that the, I don't know if it's emotional, but I feel like, like, you can say that, like, the orange part is, like, a carrot, and then, like, with leaves, and, like, you can say that orange part is, like, sunset with, like, a green building or something. I feel like it depends on when you see the painting. Like, if you're feeling, like, energetic, like, you can say that this painting has, like, really, ener like, powerful, powerful, like, energy and, like, this green is kind of like pushing your emotion like down to like like green saying like calm down a little bit like that. I don't know. Okay. Right. Do you have any other questions for the yes. tomorrow? So when you do an artwork, mm -hmm. you always try to like transmit some feeling okay. because I don't feel like. If I draw something, I don't feel like <laughs> I'm not trying to, to transmit any any emotion or something. It's just because I wanna write, I, I wanna draw something. So wait, you, with minimalism, are you trying to communicate yeah. something about yourself? Definitely, yeah. I feel like many artists um try to try to like um show their emotions, their messages through their artwork. Like, I feel like that's the main reason of art, like, in modern art, I think, at least. And I feel like if you have, like, strong feelings in your artwork, that would make, that would make your artwork really strong, like, I think. <laughs> I feel like, um, also the art is, uh, a type of communication. It's like a language. I feel like you don't like say a word, but you can feel things and, you know, from the art. art. Anyway. Uh, I mean, uh, how do you know that uh, the artist wants to transmit the, uh, <laughs> like actually, I don't, I don't know, like, did they say that or something? Like, how do you know about that? <laughs> and like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but actually, okay. Well, like you don't understand what how. Yeah, how how can how do you know that they transmit the stuff? Because like often like we know that Leonardo da Vinci draw a very beautiful picture, mm -hmm. but we don't know that does he mean something or just he draw for fun, mm -hmm. draw for fun, you know. Dude, we, that came up with the cave picture mm -hmm. that we talked yeah. about with they were like worshiping deities and it was like why why I couldn't they just be that drawn? That the like same um, type of art with this because it's not you know like art used to be and um, showing evidence of like you know we showed I showed you the piece from medieval art like that shows the evidence of what happened in those days and. This is like kind of modern art, and it is doesn't have to show the history. I mean, like this is kind of a history because this is like what we think in like you know like early like in what do you call like in this generation like people think about art this way and like not like showing the history. Like, as you can see. My question is like kind of related to the head. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to ask is that you couldn't, like us trying to understand the picture or like mm -hmm. the image or the painting, like backfires from like the message they're trying to give, like the one person who carried the urine into the museum mm -hmm. and it was counted as art and the way we and you might understand it as art, but like to somebody else who like doesn't get it, they might think it was just Trash. a person who wanted to disrespect <laughs> the museum by putting a urinal there because mm -hmm. like a disrespectful mm -hmm. thing to do. So like, 
couldn't it like backfire like by us trying to understand the images? So you didn't it like yeah. I mean, like not everybody has to love the piece. You know, like you don't have to love it. You don't have to get it, but you can at least get some information out of it. All right, Mario, last question. Okay, so you're trying to prove that <laughs> minimalism is not boring. Yeah. So if you say that it's not boring, are you trying to say that uh, minimalism, minimalism uh, has a feeling to transmit? Because, for example, here, some people can say, oh, it's just a, a green and a green square and a orange circle. But for other people, it can be, I don't know, it sunshine or something mm -hmm. you know it can be crazy <laughs> yeah. uh, so are you trying to say that minimalism actually presses conflict to other people yeah. mm -hmm. how how i mean like <laughs> i feel like what you've experienced and what you've been through kind of affects uh, how you perceive things in like real life you know like um and i feel i feel like this is like all about like your like perspective and how you see how you see things how you like get um, how you control things Okay, thank you very much. Woo! So controversial.